Welcome to Far Out of Faust. I'm Faust Chicho, and today I'm sitting here with Pierre Etienne uh, Vanier. Is that how I would say it? it was... You got that. That was perfect. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Pierre Etienne. He is a certified mind-body practitioner. He's a certified tension and trauma release provider. He's also a resilience toolkit facilitator and a master clinical hypnotherapist. Pierre's life's work is committed to building a more resilient community where people can free themselves from distress and suffering and renew their desire to live a fulfilling life. He teaches self-managed mind-based and body-oriented techniques that are safe, effective, and non-pharmaceutical. He helps individuals as well as organizations find the focus they need to overcome whatever challenges they're facing. Just to list a few of his organizational clients, Huntington Memorial Hospital, Huntington Hospital Cancer Center, Huntington Memorial Research Institute, USC Norris Comprehensive Center, USC Fertility and USC Oncology. And the list goes on and on, which is a very impressive list of, of very big uh, institutions that you work with. Pierre, Dien, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for beaming in, brother. It's an honor to have you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Man, it's, I, you know, I, when I read all the places that you work with, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive, man. And I, I'm hip hypnotherapy is just something I'm, you know, I, I, I have a little bit of understanding about it because I, I do a lot of meditation and I understand the power of subconscious, uh, of the subconscious mind and, and how it's, I mean, you just can never underestimate it. It's, it's infinite in what we, what it can accomplish when it's, uh, working. So th this was, this has been so cool to learn about your work and, and there's so much I want to talk about. So let's, let's jump right into it. I mean, I know, right. I kind of gave everyone a, um, you know, very broad view of, of, of all the things that you, you work with and for as a professional, but I, all, I know that right now you're, you're in Egypt, right. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure what you're doing there. I know we had to uh, work out a time. I mean, what, what, what are you doing? You're in Cairo right now, right? I, I live here. Oh, you I, uh, okay? I, I pretty much live here. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm starting my second decade actually in in Cairo, Egypt, uh, and and for fully actually my wife is Egyptian. Sometimes people okay. like what, what brought you here. I initially started to work here many years ago, uh, and then I met her, and they were like, mm, that makes sense. Yeah, Cairo is <laughs> a beautiful place. So we just we just recently came back. So that's why this one here. I'm home. Very cool. How 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 is it over there right now? It's hot. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. It's it's well. It it depends the uh, the angle of the question, but um, I find it um, I find it like a great place that should be on everybody's bucket list. Oh yeah, um, and on a, a maybe on a little bit more controversial uh, point, I also find it very freeing uh, mm -hmm. to be in a place where 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 I you know my uh, my kids are not in between. Uh, plexiglass and in, like with five masks on their face and where they're able to actually you know um, socialize and meet people and shake hands without 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 freaking out and I'm saying that with respect you know to all people who absolutely make decisions I'm just making my own decisions and I'm saying ah, it's good to be here man and uh, you read my mind because right behind that question all this uh, the subtext was when I asked how how is it there was regarding everything you just mentioned so that's incredible yeah. to hear because you just don't hear much about you know there are certain places that are kind of left out of the news for reasons <laughs> and in uh, egypt and cairo is certainly one of those places you just don't hear much about it so that's uh, fascinating to hear and wonderful to hear i mean there's I, nothing I, sensational right now about it you know it comes into the news into the into the u.s media right I, well, mm -hmm. like let's let's remember that again i've I've lived for eight years before moving back here. I, I was actually living in LA for eight years. Oh, okay. And and me coming out of the Matrix was like, oh wow, there's like so much more. Like there's so many extra layers of of fear, like that's that's being instilled into people's yeah. body, my nervous system that I I observe as a, as a practitioner who's been working with that for like more than a decade, and uh, and so being here, I'm like, mm, that's actually you know, it's fascinating how. Uh, human relationships, having having healthy, normal re human relationships, or can be such an amazing resource for your, <laughs> for your creativity, for your health, for your you know not freaking the not freaking out. And I don't know what's your policy on cursing on that. <laughs> no, uh, we don't we don't have one. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's beautiful, like not having to freak the fuck out. Everything you like, every time you're like, oh, 
you know, in the same way with somebody else. It's like, that's okay. I'm okay. Yeah. You're okay. Let's take a breath. You know, it's, um, it's such a big thing and it's so underestimated <clears throat> in our, mm -hmm. in this society and, and the amount of, uh, of, of damage that, that chronic stress and in chronic fear can do to a body is, is again, not to be underestimated. It, 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 it is, it is a serious thing. It's, you know, it's, in my opinion, <laughs> you'll you'll end up in the grave a lot sooner than you would from the thing that you're apparently as fear, as every everyone is afraid of. You know, it's still pretty bad here. As you know, I I you get in. I I, I don't um, it unless I'm literally mandated and forced to wear a mask. I I don't I don't feel the need to wear one. You know, I don't, I certainly don't wear one outside. And in the city, almost everyone almost everyone still does. I mean, which is a little crazy to me. I don't, I don't, I don't know what they imagine that's doing. I know that they've been convinced that they're um, helping something and I, and that's admirable. Uh, but, but I don't uh, believe that in the physics of it. I'm mean, just the physics of it, <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and I think, thank you, thank you for reminding us. And again, I, 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 I'd love for viewers to understand that, you know, this is a, your position. My position is a personal position. I'm not going to force people to take their mask off. Right? right. I'm not going to force people to not vaccinate. Don't want to vaccinate. Like this is, you know, I'm thinking about Howard Stern. I saw, I kind of disconnected from the news, but I saw Stern saying, you know, fuck their freedom. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Fuck anti-vaxxers. And I was like, wow, like this is, we're going, we're going far into like, yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't know what you're doing. You're too dumb to make a, an informed decision. <laughs> so we kind of make this decision for yourself. And I'm like, no, thank you. So for me, I'm seeing that everything that's happening and i don't you know i, I don't know if that, that's the topic that you wanted to start with but with like what are the the, the repercussions or what are the measures the safety measures that we're doing right now because just this week i've talked to several new clients who are telling me i had anxiety i had ocd i had some like minor issues that were kind of like you know all of us we all have issues yeah but now we're telling me brother a year and a half into it like this is out of control like <laughs> i've had and and they're like and they're like please help you know, yeah. because there's so much fear in their in their body and nervous system, you know, that that's being pushed onto them as far as I see it. And that's why I'm 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 angry and I'm and I'm kind of done being like silent <clears> and completely it's like, well, it's, you know, do what you want. We're like, no, do what you want, but also be aware that everything has a cost here. That's right. right. Everything has a cost. And so when you when you you know, when you force kids, like when kids are not able to read social yeah. expression, facial expressions, that takes a toll when people I've, I've talked to people who've kept, kept their kids at home for almost yeah. a year without without letting them out. This is child abuse. Yeah. I'm like, what are you? I understand what you're trying to protect them from, but what are what, what is the what damage, are the repercussions? The, the the certain damage that is happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, I you know, for me, it's about the middle path, right? Both right. spiritually, religiously. Like in all ways, my, my path, my teacher remind me of like the middle path and let's find a way that, you know, to balance, to be safe That's it. and at the same time recognize that, wow, if I'm taking two like drastic measures, I'm going to, I'm going to pay you the price. And right. that's, I see it now as somebody working in the field of mental health and, and nervous system regulation. And when I speak with all my friends, you know, we're doing the same. They're like, that wave is coming that wave is coming the fourth wave is psychological is breakdown is depression and anxiety you know it's not it's, not, it's anyway. it i'll tell you what you know it's exhausting i saw i had a, a, <laughs> it's, a it's you know it's and and i had a friend who who she just she went away for the weekend she's just she just got a place upstate she's like i'm not if you know you won't you won't hear from me because I'm not bringing my phone and I'm like, good for you. You know, I, I, I have the same exact impulse, you know, but I have, but I have kids and I, and I'm, and I'm busy and I can't, I can't just do it. She's in a position to just kind of go and sit in a cabin and just listen to the birds and, you know, and, and, and God bless her. Um, but I don't, that's kind of the feeling that is, that, that is, you know, going through me as well as I'm, I've just, I've had it, you know, and, and I, and, I just breathe and I, and I come back into myself and I'm just like, look, you, you know, you, ha you have to allow people to come to their own realizations, you know, like it doesn't matter how loud your voice is, 
you're not going to, you know, people are going to come to their own conclusions. You know, I mean, like it's, if some people are ready to hear something, they're going to hear it, whether you're the one saying it or not. And, and oftentimes I find myself to be the one saying it, but it's such a, it's so controversial now. And, and even the, even the conversation, which of course should be encouraged and allowed has been discouraged, censored. And, and like, you know, and people just think that this is somehow normal because they're being conditioned to view it as normal. And the problem is if you don't understand the way programming works, which I know you do, you know, then you don't see, a lot of people don't see what's happening. You know, they're just kind of like, this is the way it is now. We all have to do our part. I'm like, <laughs> and I think the only reason why, like I, I, as somebody who, you know, who has been working hard to network and also, but just to tell people, Hey, let's try it out. Let's try it out. Tell your, ask your patient what they thought of, of the services we provided. If they benefited from it, why don't we continue? If they didn't, let's forget about it. And, and, and believe it or not, people actually like to be empowered and to have <laughs> so that they can yeah. promote their own recovery, right? Because I, I hear so many people and, and actually most, most of my work is um, for, for the, I, the, the, I mean, the short, long, like short story is that I used to work for, for the United Nations for many years, supporting people mm -hmm. living with HIV and AIDS. And then eventually I was like, oof, a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy. Uh, I feel like maybe we could, you know, I think that's a great organization, but lots of things that, that, that could be fixed there. And I was like, okay, let's, let's move into more clinical work, more groups, more, more emotional work, because it's not about sharing data and information. It's about really tapping into the emotions and the truth of, of that somatic experience, these emotions, these sensations that we connect, that, that, that will come up. And, and if we, we're not honest with ourselves, then <laughs> it backfires. So I see, I see actually people asking for these kind of practices more and more. I see so many people uh, for the past eight years, Huntington Hospital and, and other places, I've been working with a lot of people dealing with cancer. And I hear so much like, well, my, my, my body's a project, you know, people are working on me. And, and it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. It, it, I, I don't, I, you know, nobody, I keep on telling people like, nobody can, nobody can heal you. You know, right. but but the one and and your own body and you have this innate ability um and so reclaiming that sense of like Ooh, there's actually something i can do about it that's right my, my breathing will change you know will alkalize my my body will make my brain more resistant will boost my immune system there's like movements there's like so many ways so many us, ways so many alternatives and at times complementary alternatives, or it doesn't have to sure. be one or the other. I have people who are on cancer treatments, right? Like, and, and who are making their own decisions and good for them. If yeah. this decision is informed, um, I'm, I want to be there for them and tell, and tell them, in addition to whatever you're doing, right? Let's see ways to reduce the symptoms, to help you, to, right. to, to reduce your stress, your anxiety, and so on and so forth. And it's, and it's amazing to hear people after practicing, whether it's like, hypnotherapy, guided imagery, some meditation, different practices, and then they go to do their, their blood test and they're being asked, they were like, mm -hmm. wow, what, what did you take? What did you do? Like, what did you I, do? I didn't, I didn't <clears throat> take anything. They're assuming like, what kind of meds? Did you change your meds? And right. like, I didn't change my meds. I was imagining my immune system, like cleansing, yeah. clearing, being boosted and so on and so forth. And then white blood cells whoosh, go up. People Boom. like walking out of surgeries and a few days later, People are telling them, oh, this is weird. Your, your recovery, you know, it's much faster than expected. What happened? Nothing. I'm talking to my body and letting, letting my body know that, hey, I'm here. Thank you. Gratitude, patience, acceptance, all of these things that like old traditions have been teaching us for like millenniums you yeah. know, are, are, are good to, for us to remember. You know? They're good. And, and <clears throat> the truth is, you know, you don't hear about a lot of them because <laughs> They, I mean, in a lot of ways, money in it. that's right. They don't want you to know that you, that you have this power because it. You, they want you to think that you need to go to them for for what you need, and 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 that's not a conspiracy. That's that's the society we live in. That's I mean, that's allopathic medicine has become the dominant force, not just in medicine but in the world. In case you haven't looked mm -hmm. around lately, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 that's because it's also being used as a 
as an exercise in control. But beside the point, like I want to just to give you a little idea of, of what Pierre Ten is talking about. You know, this incredible study that came out of Harvard Medical School. You know, and this is this is the power of of, of what he's what he's talking about, what, what he works with, with his, with his patients, with his clients. Um, so this is, I love this study. I was going to read a little, a little bit from it. So you have an idea, you know, of, of the power of, of hypnotherapy and its ability to aid in the healing process. So uh, they did a study of the Harvard uh, medical school, right. And then um, it was, they, they wanted to, to test w- what kind of progress hypnotherapy could have on patients who were having a breast reduction. So, cause that's a kind of a well-known, very um, painful recovery process. It can be right. And so um, it was a, it was a woman, her name was Carol uh, Ganandes, I think. Um, and, and then she worked with Patricia Brooks of the union Institute in Cincinnati. And they wanted to determine if, if hypnosis could speed the wound healing and recovery, if it had that kind of power. Right. But Four years before that, uh, the, the way the story goes is um, Carol worked was working with another professor of radiology at Harvard Medical, right? And they they published a report on, on a on a study of hypnosis to speed up the mending of broken bones, right? And the way they did this was they they recruited twelve people with broken ankles who didn't require surgery and who received you know kind of usual treatment at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Um, and in addition to that, they they hypnotized half of them once a week for 12 weeks, while the other half received only normal treatment, right? The same doctor did the casts, the care, the same radiologist took the x-rays, you know, it was very controlled. Uh, the radiologist who evaluated the x-rays had no idea which patients underwent hypnosis, right? And the results of this, you know, I, I think the article said that they stood out like a sore ankle. They were, it was obvious. It was clear who the, the hypnotized people healed faster than those who were not, you know, something like after six weeks, they, the, they were about three weeks ahead of the non hypnotized in their mending process and the bones. Right. So they kind of wrote that off and said, well, they were getting psychological support. They were getting increased psychological support. That's, that's kind of why it was. So in this experiment, four years later, um, Car- Carol from Harvard said, you know, let, let's do it this way. So, so it can't be written off, right? She, she got 18 breast surgery patients, okay? She separated them into three groups and they all got the same surgical care by the same doctors. Six received standard care, six received attention and support from a psychologist and six underwent hypnosis before and after their surgery, okay? stay with me. Hypnosis sessions occurred once a week for eight weeks and psychological soothing took place on the same schedule. Now, while in this state, Carol would offer suggestions to them. They were custom tailored to different stages of surgery recovery before, after, you know, and, and she was saying that you can even suggest to a patient that they can reduce bleeding during the surgery by controlling their heart rate, controlling their blood flow, right? How powerful is that? So they focused on expectation, decreased inflammation, diminished scar tissue, accelerated wound healing, all these things. And then they, they took the test. So after week one and week seven, the tests were done. Nurses and doctors participating in the study, they visibly obsess- assessed the wounds. They measured all the wounds in all three groups. Knowing, none of them knew who or who, right? They took the photographs. Each patient, each patient also rated their own healing progress. Okay. In, in the finale, the result was clear. Okay. The, the, they healed significantly faster. The hypnotized people were way above the other people. And do you, do, you, do you remember the percentage or do you have the percentage? I think it was like, um, faster. No, I don't remember. Do you remember? It was 41% faster. Wow. 41%. 41%. That is huge. That's almost that's almost doubled the recovery time. That's almost that, twice as fast. That that is the power of 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 this therapy. That is that's incredible, man. I mean, like I just that blows my mind that that God, more people aren't talking about that. Think about all the surgeries that are going on and all the people and and the implications of that in all healing. I mean, we're dealing right now with you know. A health crisis in, in, a, in a lot of ways, but 
that health crisis has more to do with the state of health of, of the human being right now than it does with everything else, I think. Yeah. That's my opinion. But, but I'd, like to think, I'd like to think that, as mentioned previously, this is changing. That's why some of the big organizations are saying, let's, let's try this. Not because the whole system is saying, mm, we like this, this is great. Uh, because the, the, bigger, the big system is saying, oh shit, this is going to cost us you know, like potential profits. Like if people are getting off drugs and like if you don't need another two or three lines of drugs to manage the initial symptoms of whatever we did, you know, mm, this is not good for us. And yet I have faith that I see an increasing number of, of physicians, oncologists, nurses were saying, well, this is, we've seen it. We, we've seen the work, we, see, we hear you know, the feedback from, from, from patients. So yes, we have research. We've had, we've had research for the, like for the past 50, 60 years of documented scientific clinical research that yes, this stuff work. And yet still a lot of people would be like, no, oh, no, this is mumbo jumbo stuff. <laughs> it, like to me, it's like, well, no, that, that, that statement is actually a reflection of your lack of like, you know, lack of uh, like updated knowledge in terms of like how it works. And so I'd like to think that right now people, all people wait, are waking up because do we really need like a, like a clinical research to let us know that breathing helps? Like, <laughs> I mean, this is, I, and, I, and I say both jokingly and depressingly, yeah. when, I, when I teach breathing to people who are like in the process of, of recovery, you know, I, 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 I share a bunch of, of research just to let them know, hey, by the way, like this is tested, you know, for the past 50, 60 years, we know it works, but hey, by the way, this has also been used for the past 2,000 years, for the past 3,000 years, for the past 4,000 years, in like different health systems were actually looking at, at the, the human being holistically, not as like, oh, your stomach hurts, here is a pill for your stomach. You know, like, what is this? How, we, we, we lost the big picture, and now we we're did. just coming back. We yeah. gladly, for me, I'm so relieved to see that we finally back to a way of approaching health holistically and saying, oof, I'm a whole being, and maybe my, you know, my stomach ache, maybe not just my stomach, but it has to do with the fact that maybe I've been in a state of fear for the past year and a yeah. half. Maybe I got traumatized when I was a kid, like, you know, like childhood trauma, all these things. If we're spending as much money, you know, right now on, on, on studying like childhood trauma, oh my God. lack of trauma and the impact of stress and like in developing like drugs, my goodness. It would be such a much healthier society in the U.S. and world in general. Yeah, I mean, I tell people all the time, uh, the the United States, we have a food and drug administration. Okay, those two words should never be in the same <laughs> sentence, let alone the same regu regulatory body. That is fucking insane. That is insane. Okay, you cannot have food and drug. That is a conflict of interest, especially in America. We, we know how, how our society is set up, okay? Like the FDA, the EPA, you know, these organizations, they are not looking out for you. You have to look out for yourself. I, I, I had a, a very emotional conversation with my 10-year-old in bed a few nights ago. You know, I was explaining to him about the EPA, about the Environmental Protection Agency, and I was explaining to him what they're supposed to do. And then I was explaining to him what they actually do and what they have been doing. And he got upset and he started, he got, he, he's so sensitive. I worry about him because he's so, you know, and I, I should have known better. Maybe I shouldn't have even told him what I was telling him, but I want him to know that from, from a young age that he has to take care of himself. He cannot depend on, you know, any any regulatory body, any government to tell him what is and is not healthy for him. And I, and I want him to learn that, but he, you know, he, what he, what he was feeling into was the level of betrayal, you know, that is, has happened in our society that a great many people are in denial about, you know, or they'll admit that big pharma has had its faults. Really? $4 billion in criminal fines. Do you know how many people you have to kill in Maine? To have to pay four billion dollars i mean think about and, that and if you it's still a drop right in the ocean of it is, and it doesn't even slow the 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 assembly line you know it doesn't even it's not even a chunk in their profits and but of course the the, the government is happy to take the four billion dollars but 
you know, it's, it doesn't change anything. Again, it's, it's, it's a way of them. It's a get out of jail free payment is what it is. When, when they call them criminal fines for a reason, that means there was malicious intent. It means they knew they were doing harm and they continued to do harm anyway, sometimes for decades. And so obviously I didn't, I didn't tell my son about all that. I just told him about the nature of the EPA um, and the FDA and, 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 what they're supposed to do and what they actually do, you know, and he was very upset by it. He was crying. Um, and I had to kind of console him and, and empower him just to understand that I only shared that with him so that he knows going forward and he, he can take care of himself. And I felt, yeah. I felt bad then in my, the, the, the collapse, the collapse of modern civilization. Uh, I don't know how good a bit, how good of a bedtime story that is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you want to you know, try something else, but but I, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I think you know, again, I say it as a joke because because I think I mean for me we we let we let my kids I have two kids they're eleven and thirteen, and uh, and, and these kids are smart because they understand that yeah they, like they understand that you know they being self reliable and not necessarily in an isolated way but like coming back to to the power of local communities coming back to the fact that you know I. Uh, it's important for you to know where to get food, how to grow food, how mm -hmm. to like get medical services and so on and so forth. You know, I'm, I'm in Egypt and, and for me almost exactly 10 years ago, you know, we're going through the Egyptian revolution. Mm. And, and, and maybe that's, you know, the topic for another, for another conversation. But in that moment, <sighs> everything collapsed. And in that moment was like, so who's living around me? What more right. resources? within reach like the people i know and and i think that's that's kind of what i'm almost grateful for is like by us witnessing as far as i see it you know the 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 end of i don't know about the end of the world but most most likely the end of a world as right. far as i see it um there's there's an opportunity there's kind of like a like wake the fuck up because like right. this is you know this is this is just a joke and and now let's just start fresh let's see how how we can build something where i actually know where my food comes from you right. know I have I have people who can help me heal i can I have people who can help me you know breathe and 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 and, and we can live <clears throat> together right not right. as isolated people but as a community that's right and and you know there's a big misconception and you talk about it i i i i've read you comment about it you know that that doctors can't give health i mean that's not health comes from within it comes from yeah it's a it's a lifestyle choice you know and and our society especially here in america has to come to this realization and and fast because you know the the, the downward spiral is this notion that and it's it, it's such a it's such a faulty false notion and i don't have anything against doctors i have immense respect for doctors they do incredible things mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm i i have the utmost respect for doctors for veterinarians for you know people who work in that system but the, the fact of the matter is not it's not a question it's a fact that in medical school they don't teach them about nutrition they don't they're not taught how to cultivate a healthy body they're taught how to treat disease and illness yeah. and stitch and and the surgeries they're capable of they're incredible don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not saying anything bad about them but they it's a very limited time where they're actually learning about like nutrition and that's why you go to the doctors and you know i had a friend who <laughs> his wake up call was when his father was in a his father was in the hospital for a diabetic i think a diabetic stroke and the and the 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 nurse was on her way out and she gave him a coca-cola and he was like ma'am <laughs> what are you doing you know what i mean like you trying to kill him he was he couldn't believe it i was like they don't know man they, they don't they don't know they're not taught that you know what i'm saying they're treating him for a diabetic stroke and coca-cola is all they got <laughs> you know what i mean they no, don't it, they don't it, think it, like that it is infuriating and I, you know if if we were to go a little bit more personal for me, this is affecting me personally because I have a father who's been dealing with, you know, his own personal demons were eventually turned into, you know, health issues. And, and I want to say probably for the past 30 years, he's been seeking the savior 
and I don't mean like God or Jesus. He's been seeking the one physician who will be able to tell mm. him what pill he needs to take. And 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 I've and I'm learning to let go because I'm like you know this is this is your life like you're 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 grown ass adults you make your own decisions but for for the past thirty years you have a system that's been failing you abusing you putting you on drugs that keep on making things worse and that eventually you need more drugs to manage the symptoms of that first one and 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 then it's it's like a such a vicious circle so so I'm 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 frustrated here because again we we. We creating people a state of dependence. We we destroying health and uh, and and when you look at the U.S., you know I, I think the U.S. like consumes about ninety percent of of the world production of painkillers. Does that mean that Americans like or like you know are more in pain, or does it mean something else? You know, it's like yeah. when when I first started to live in the U.S., I was looking at TV. And it amazed me, like, wow, your commercial break is 15 minutes and half of that is oh, lawyers, yeah. and the other half is from from us to call. Like if radio you appeals or you sue somebody. And I'm like, wow, this is this is weird, you know. Crazy. Weird and, way and to approach life. It and, and like I, you know, I and I don't I stopped watching TV and I I even stopped watching movies. It's just hard for me to watch them anymore because they're just and I mean, and I'm, I, I'm an actor, I'm a producer, I'm a film was, was what, you know, I mean, I came from the stage, that was my love, but um, film is what I was doing for the last 10, 10, 15 years. And mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it's crazy that I, it's hard for me to watch now because it's all so fake. <laughs> um, it's, and, and the, and the TV is, I, I can't, I can't bear to watch it, let alone the commercials. And the radio, you turn it on, and every thirty seconds is is a pharmaceutical, you know, vaccine. You know, I mean, they spend half their time listing the side effects because they have to. So it's like, and they do them really fast, so you can't understand they're saying like, you know what I mean? It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what did she just say? If I experience death, I should call my doctor. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, I was like, those are side effects. Those sound like like big effects, not side effects. Like if that was to happen to me, I don't know if I would call it a side effect. <laughs> yeah, that's... And, and, and yet what's amazing here, and I work with a lot of, you know, clients and patients dealing with, with, with chronic pain. So, so what I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say with a lot of respect is that as, as important as you may be, sometimes who have access to drugs, who will help you to manage that pain, uh, you know how powerful that is for you to learn how to hold that pain? Like, and, and, and there's a lot behind my statement there that, you know, we, but holding that pain, learning skills, I teach pain, I've, I've taught pain management, right? To, to nurse and nurse practitioners in hospitals because, because one, we have an opioid epidemic that's getting out of control mm -hmm. in, in the US. And so people are like, people realizing they're like, I don't want to get on that shit. Like, I want to, I want to learn, I want to learn something different, right? Or if I'm on it, teach me ways to not get hooked up and to get out of it as quickly as possible. So, you know, people are becoming more and more aware. And yet I want to go back to that first statement, which is like learning how to be honest with yourself and to learn how to hold your pain and to learn how to be vulnerable enough for yourself and for others. So you stop. You stop pretending. I work with I work with so many people who they're forced into a system of of pretending that they're okay, of pretending that you know they're confident, they're at peace, they and they're being shoved that like have a beef with positive thinking. Yeah, I have a beef with it because I see people who are being told every single moment just be positive, and I'm and and and, and I'm and I'm there to tell them. It's okay for you right now for a few moments to be angry, to yeah. be sad, to admit that, like to say that you're in pain. And you know what? We're going to be with you when you say that and we're going to hold you. And I, I, and you, and most likely, most likely when you do this kind of work in groups, whether it's men's group or like mixed groups or whatever it is, when we do this, you know what happens? Yeah. And it's become more bearable. Yeah. Suddenly that nervous system is like, oh, Oh, it's actually, it's not as bad. It's not, I'm not saying it's pleasant. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying holding that pain as opposed to trying to mask it 
right. trying to help us push through. We're not, we need to stop pushing through. We need to slow down. We need to take time to feel what we need to feel, to heal what we need to heal. This is how we're gonna, this is how, I, at least I speak for myself and for the people I'm working with, this is how I see health. An opportunity to be vulnerable. If something happens to me, well, somehow there's a plan that, there's, there's a message that's telling me, mm, maybe something's not working. Maybe I need to adjust my, my diet. Maybe I, I need to adjust my, my work schedule. Maybe I need to freaking like leave my job and do yeah. something that actually fulfills me. Maybe my body's telling me, I hate that shit. I'm done with it. Change. So right? many people. And it's easy to say here, like, because again, right, it's like when you're in it, it's, I know. it's infuriating to hear it. And yet, I think it's so important for us to say, hey, let's be human here. Like you don't, you shouldn't feel positive, confident, strong every single moment you're human, give yourself That's right. acceptance. I start almost all my groups by asking people how they feel in the moment, asking them to be honest, and then asking them to be like a couple of breaths and see if they could just accept how they're feeling right now because they're enough. Yeah. Right. In that moment, you're enough. And everything is temporary anyway, right? Things are going to shift. Things That's are going right. to move. So, you know. It's, it's beautiful what you am said. I making, and am I making sense here? You're making total sense to me. And it reminds me, you know, that what I said to my son, and I was cued by my wife. Thank God, she's 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 a little more uh, conscientious of this than I am at times. You know, she's the first thing she said to my son because she heard the conversation and we were on the bunk bed. We were on the top bunk, and she popped up over the bunk bed and she saw that he was upset. and uh, And she said, "It's okay that you're upset. You should you 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 should be upset. It's upsetting." You know, she said, and I said, "That's right." You know, thank God she came up and said that because I was upset that I upset him. I was upset that I had to explain that I was explaining this to him. So I started to get upset too. But I, you know, she's then we encouraged him to, to to just let his feelings happen, you know, and then and then breathe and come back. Because right now here in the in the bunk bed, I'm I'm about to read to you a, a, a book. Right. We're done talking about that, you know, and in this moment, no one's in danger and you're safe, you know. And he did. He he, he was able to breathe and come back and you know, it's a, it's a big difference than from the way I yeah. was raised. Um, so, 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 yeah. no, and and in my last it. podcast, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to thank you for, for reminding him that it's okay to feel that it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be sad. I'm talking to myself. I'm thinking about how I'm raising my kids. And because it, the goal is not for us, it's not for me to not be upset, to not be sad, to not... The goal is to not be stuck in these mm, things. That's right. There's a sense, I think that the concept of stuckness and being stuck in that constant, we shouldn't be stuck in anything, right? Like when I see people who's like, who's telling me, I'm always happy. Like, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> is, like, like, like there might be a psychopath, right? Like, 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 <laughs> because you shouldn't be like, this is not healthy. This is no. not this is, and so when people tell me I never, I, I, I'm never sick or I'm never depressed or I'm never angry and I'm like, oof, there's going to be a lot that we're going to have. Yeah, to <laughs> yeah we're going to have a lot. But, to but the about. ability to oscillation was, was, a, was a word that was used yesterday in one of my groups. And the person was like, I'm oscillating and I'm allowing right. that oscillation. And I was like, thank you. And your body's going to thank you because this, that's the goal. Inspire yourself and get inspiration from nature from everything around that's us. right it's about like connect to it feel it make space for it whether it's sadness grief anger and then yeah just, you know come back reclaim that safety remember that daddy's going to read a book and in this very moment you're safe and you're enough that's right um and so that was it was a great moment because you know, I, it gave me an opportunity to to remind him that it's okay to be upset, you know, and, and it is, a, it's an upsetting thing. But, you know, I, I spent uh, a good amount of time on just, of course, synchronistically in my last podcast talking about um, my last, but or, or two podcasts ago, maybe, but, you know, we talked about pain and, and I was speaking to a, a you know, a kind of a, a very, a very long time podcast host named Josh Trent. And, uh, he had a guest on that I was kind of blown away with who talks about, you know, this whole, the whole male camaraderie and this notion about, you know, we teach, you know, this it's, and it's, I, I was saying, I think it's kind of a global thing sometimes, you know, with men that, that we don't, we don't want to talk about our pain. We don't want to talk about, 
what it, how it feels to fail. You know what I mean? We just brush it, you know, brush that, brush that shit off. You know what I mean? Like walk it off, <laughs> put some dirt on it, keep going. You know, it's like, we have this crazy notions of what it means to be uh, a boy or a man. And, and, and they're not, none of them are healthy because what we talked about and what I learned from his podcast that I was watching is that, you know, you, that's a missed opportunity to learn from your pain, right? Your pain is usually there to teach you something, tell you something, whether it's a signal about the body, you know, people don't realize that when something goes on in the body and there's an ache or pain, that's a signal, a literal signal that something's up for you to take a look at. It's not a sim, a signal for you to get rid of that pain. I mean, it's a signal for you to find out why the pain is there and then, you know, do what you need to do to get rid of it. But if you just think it's about pain, then you're ignoring the actual signal. You know what I'm saying? People don't think about that so much because of the nature and the dominant allopathic model that's in place. So we don't think as above, so below the way that, you know, we used to, <laughs> I'm sure you, you know that more than anyone, <clears throat> but, 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 but then you, you're going into here, you know, the fascinating topic of, of, of toxic masculinity or, or yeah. of, of masculinity in general. And, and if I may, you know, go back to the concept of vulnerability, I mean, for me, I, I've dis I've discovered, uh, you know, I've discovered men's work, uh, like two, three years ago, my, my marriage not, was not going well, like their, their need for adjustments. And I was looking for a space. Uh, and I and I came across an organization that's called the Sacred Sons uh, in Sacred the US, Sons. And, and and the Sacred Sons are freaking awesome, and they and for me it was an opportunity to to heal that relationship with the masculine, and to and to explore, not like there's no you know there's again I'm not looking for anybody to fix me or to heal me. I'm looking for spaces where I'll have the opportunity to feel my pain, to feel my anger, to heal my relationship with my feminine, with me with my masculine. And, and I feel like today people and men especially or 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 equating vulnerability with weakness. And and that's so sad because you you you're you're stealing, you know, yourself like the opportunity, you're stealing the opportunity of uh of, of feeling maybe you may maybe you're gonna you're gonna reduce the amount of somehow reduce the intensity on the short term of maybe some anxiety, some stress, some fear, but on the long term, that she's gonna blow up, right? And it's gonna blow up either on your on yourself or on your loved ones. Yeah. And so when I witness men, because that's really most more and more of my work is around is around men's work, men were showing up and saying, like I wanna I wanna learn how to hold that pain. That's right. I wanna right. learn how to and and I wanna be surrounded by and and when i say i am really speaking again of, of myself i mm -hmm. want to be surrounded with men who are telling me we here feel what you need to feel you need to yell you need to punch you need to cry you need to curve into a ball you need to do what you want to do to kind of like complete that nervous system right. nervous system cycle that started five years ago ten years ago like when i was a small kid pre-verbal whatever like we carry that shit like during our whole life not only we carry our own stuff, we carry intergenerational stuff. That's right. Okay? I'm, I'm healing. That's... I know I'm, I'm working actively to heal some stuff that, that I've inherited from my father, we inherited from his father, when like, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, this shit ends now. I don't right. want my boy to have to deal with this. Right. And, it, this, and is it, a, this is a work in progress, but it's so important. It's so important. And so when, 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 when you say that, I, I just want our listeners to understand that, that there is this it's not just um he's not just guessing at it so like there's been a lot of scientific hard scientific evidence and and what they're doing is they're able to look into the dna and they're able to see and trace trauma and 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 they can see that sometimes it's it, it's passed down and it's gen it, it's either generational it can skip a generation sometimes but you literally if you don't heal it you have a wonderful chance of unfortunately passing it on to your children and that is the nature of trauma it the, it gets stuck in the body and 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 i'm sure that pierre can attest to that you know from a, his life's work how much trauma gets stuck in our body and, and if you're talking about the body you're talking about dna 
so it's not woo woo. It's not, you know, it's not even hypothesis anymore. They have seen it under a microscope. And so this is, this is, I was just saying this in, in, in my last podcast, this is the hero's journey. This is the, 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 the last true hero's journey left for, for man in this life is to, is to dig deep and find out what that is. I don't care what your profession is. I don't care if you're a professional tennis player. You know what I mean? Like you could be the best golfer on the planet. And if you ain't doing the work, you're going to crash your car. You know, you're going to lose your contracts. You're going to end up on painkillers on the front page of the newspaper. Just ask Tiger Woods. You know what I'm saying? Like there is no amount of success or numbing that, that is going to take the place of a healed, integrative, integrated person. Right. I mean, like it's so clear to me how, how clear. Yeah. That, that speaks to me deeply. Like the, the, the integration, you know, I, I've, I've started to work with people living with HIV uh, in the, uh, 17 years ago. And, and the more I work, uh, and the more as a practitioner in my second decade as a practitioner, the more I work, the more I realize that as far as I see it, and, the, and, and my teachers would say, you know, there's, there's as many ways to heal as there are human beings. And, and yet, like you said, it's an it's an invitation, a reminder to actually to to engage in that work, because coming back home is the most beautiful thing that you is the most beautiful gift that you can give to yourself, absolutely, that you can give to your kids. If I'm a if I'm a more um, connected, honest, vulnerable father, I trust that my kids will benefit from that. Right? Yeah. If I if they if they, I want them to be able to connect to themselves. You know, you were talking about how you were raised. You know, I, I trust we probably were around the same age. I mean, in my early 40s, mm -hmm. I mean, mid 40s almost. And, and, they, and for me, it was like I learned a lot to not feel what I felt right. because it wasn't appropriate. It was too loud. <laughs> it, was, it was too scary and so on and so forth. And, and it's taking me so many years of work to just yeah. give myself permission to feel. And, and when I started to heal, or as I'm healing, because it's uh, again work in progress, I found myself at times crying out, crying out of gratitude. Yeah, and I was like, oh, life, you know, and and then starting to pray out of gratitude because I was like, I need an outlet because life is so amazing, mm -hmm. and at the same time so difficult. But going back to the connection and integration for me, I think what we're missing, connecting all the dots and the point, like the topics what we talked about. My hope. And my goal is to help myself and help people get connected to themselves and to their body. The premise of my work is that we have the innate ability to heal and to restore balance. And it's amazing. It's absolutely fascinating for me as a practitioner and as a person who practices what I teach to see this shift, the healing that happened, the release when people instead of trying to analyze and, and like this is help, <laughs> help me get rid of that sensation, yeah. take a step back and say, what is your body telling you? What is the sensation behind it? Can you hold Can you hold it for a few moments? And then that's when the body, just like my 10-year-old or my 11-year-old, when she throws a tantrum, if I tell her to you know keep quiet and shut up, that's not going to help much. <laughs> you know? Her, me, nothing. When I take the time to say, I'm here, I'm listening to you, what is it? Yeah, and my our bodies do the same. Our bodies do the same, and so you know. And for me, being able to reconnect to my body, to talk to my body, to express gratitude to my body, mm -hmm. and to express sadness and say, "Okay, you want to feel that? We're gonna feel that. You need to rest. We're gonna rest." Right? Yeah, that, that's amazing. That's a beautiful gift. It is a beautiful for everybody to come home. Come home. And and you know, I can't I can't wait to see. <laughs> Uh, how how you know you worry about your children no matter what but uh, i'm excited to to see how you know my children do going forward you know they're 10 and 7 right now and but they but they don't there's they're 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 certainly having um a, you know a, a better go at it um than than maybe i did um but but everything that happened to me brought me to where i am so i'm grateful for it all but mm -hmm. You know, to, I'm so fascinated to see how they how they 
flourish and, and how they thrive, you know, with the tools that I'm equipping them with and um, the knowledge that I'm giving them. Because I know that growing up, <clears throat> you know, I was completely, <laughs> completely oblivious and clueless and, 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 you know, it was a different time then, obviously, but, but um, it's exciting to see and to, you know, when, when I was to hear them speak their feelings and, and, and to allow them to see them allow themselves their feelings is, is always, it's a good sign to me that, that I'm doing the right thing, you know, and, and, and that, that I'm raising them right. Um, and, and that their relationships will reflect that as they get older, you know, and, and there's a lot, that, 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 there's a lot to be said about the implications of that and on, that on a life as, as it, you know, goes into its teens and then onward and upwards, man. Um, Which is a scary journey, but <laughs> I, I, I think just for, you know, ju just a quick comment here. I feel like for me, the most important gift I can give my kids is the ability to, for, for emotional self-regulation, mm -hmm. right? Like life, life's going to happen, shit's going to happen. There's going to be challenges regardless, right? Whether it's climate change, whether it's neighbor mm -hmm. being crazy, like whatever it is, things are going to happen. But when I see my my 13 year olds attended with me and, and participated in some programs of, of, of the sacred songs. Um, and, and it's basically like whatever, like number of weeks in, in this particular program was like eight weeks for boys and men to be together, to learn how to breathe, to learn how to talk, to learn how to just like respect each other, right. With honesty, right. And telling somebody, you know, off when they're like, Hey, this is what you're doing is not right right not right with me not right with others and so when i see that i'm like yeah this kids this kids are you know already so much more mature yeah. than you know that i was at, at their age thankfully things are evolving thankfully, yeah I, I i think they'll do i think they'll do great that program sounds great i will have i'll have to get the information okay. on it from you and i'll include it in the in the video description because i'm going to look into it it sounds awesome uh very absolutely. cool absolutely you know the other so before we we leave the topic of the the men's journey you know um i i, I wanted to make sure that you you said all you wanted to say about it because I, I i know you're involved in that group and and you know it's it's something i've been considering actually for a few months now i had i had a, a incredible guy on my show who who has a men's group he's he's based in stockholm and he's been busting my balls to come, to come into the men's group and and to participate um, with with and I was like you know, I've been I've been thinking about it but then you know it's I, I get reminded and, I, and so I, it's a good reminder to reach back out to him. Well, yeah, it, if you're looking for a sign, this is it, right? This is me bringing it right. up because it, I I would say to all men listening to it who are were wondering if there's ways right to to heal to to wonder if there's you know if we can do things differently that that for me the first time i attended an event was actually a big event it was like 120 people 120 guys and i was like oh shit that's a lot of testosterone <laughs> this is not, i was like this is not and, and it was actually an amazingly powerful yeah. opportunity for me precisely to reconnect like actually to the masculine you know, worked on daddy issues that, you know, I trust 98% of men have um, and, and, and resonate with other people's healing. And, and the, the last thing I want to mention around, around, you know, men's work, because it, I sent you a message shortly before we started. And I was like, you know, let's talk about altered consciousness. But I was like, let's talk about unaltered consciousness. Oh, yes, and, and, yes. And, and coming back to a place of like, this is where I am. This is what I feel. So it's, so it's what we've been talking about, right? It's like, instead of me being full of shit and, and for example, if I'm getting an argument, instead of shutting down um, and, and like slamming the door or instead of, obviously I'm, I'm talking about like personal example, right, right. instead of like, you know, starting to raise my voice, you know, on, on, on my kids, because guess what? This is how I grew up and this is what I saw. Oh yeah, and I know. Part of me, <laughs> when that voice comes up and, and one day my 10 year old, you know, she was, she was, she was eight or nine at some point and she was, and she told me, she came to me and she was like, oh, you, you know, when you raise your voice, you scare me. And that's the day when I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. I'm repeating that pattern. I'm stuck in that pattern. And then, and then that's when I started to look for spaces when I was like, 
this like I'm keeping all these good things that I learned. Yes, that it right. is good. I'm going to pass this on. All that bullshit that I suffered from that was, you know, whatever, you know, my, my parents and my environment yeah. did the best they could with what they had. But this ends with me. Right. And so and so in that moment, I think for us to be able to process what we need to process, reclaim that sense of safety, reclaim these communities, these groups. For me, I, there's I hardly ever you know, like spend a few days without having a guy or a friend or it's like somebody checking on me. I had lost that. I had good friends. I have people who've known me for, for 20 years, 30 years. But somehow when you, you get with a brother and, and you go deep, you know, you don't talk about politics. You don't talk about baseball. You don't talk about sport. You don't talk about all that bullshit from the Matrix. Right. Like I'm tired. I've been working with people, you know, who or reminded of their mortality on a you know on a yeah. regular basis and so so i'm kind of i don't i'm not interested in chit chat anymore if right. we're gonna sit together we're gonna talk i'm interested in knowing you i'm interested yeah. in like you knowing me like you know from a place of truth and honesty and so when i see men you know who are saying all that crap that you know that that i've been yeah. dragging for all these years it's enough uh, i'm gonna be true and honest i'm gonna align myself with my values you know, and I'm gonna ask for other men to call me on my shit when yeah. when I when I'm fit, when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm unable to, right? Or when all patterns come back. That's right. what I'm expecting from friends and brothers who, who yeah. you know, like call me out on my shit if at some point, you know, I'm uh, I'm raising my voice and I'm doing something that's that's not in line with what I committed to. Right. So I would say everybody, every man there, check out some local men's circle. Check find yourself an organization and all the women there. <clears throat> Just, you know, I'm pretty sure you also have like a man in your life who would benefit from that. Right. Most guys going into this work start because of like, you know, a kick in the butt from a, from a friend. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. You know, and, and even if you don't have the support of a spouse, you know, if, if things are out of balance in your relationship with the spouse, one of the ways that you can start to embody balance and come into a balance that may be you know i mean i not maybe it will be visibly noticeable and and it will it will change the dynamics of your relationship i promise you it, it will affect everything in your life this is what happens when you start to do this work the problem is most people don't want to do this work because it's so fucking painful it's so painful to 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 even begin to you know allow all those feelings that that you know, I, I'm just, I'm thinking of some of my best friends right now. I'm thinking of some, my, my brother, you know, I'm thinking of a lot of people I know, you know, I don't know if they'll ever do it. I encourage them all the time. I encourage, I send them links. I send this, I send them my podcast sometimes when I make direct reference to them, hoping they'll watch it, but I know why they don't do it. You know, I know why it's fucking scary. You know what I mean? Like there's so much pain there. There's so much and, 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 and they've been running from it for so long that it's almost like, a, I know how it feels. I was there, you know, I, I, it, it's like a tsunami. It, feel, it feels like the biggest wave is coming at you and, and it's just you. There's nothing in between you and it. And it, it seems like you're never going to be able to survive. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it feels like. So I understand it. Um, I mean, it, it's what I had to overcome to, to get to the place where I am today. And I'm, of course, I'm a work in progress. I still have a lot of old habits that creep right back in the moment something happens. And I, you know, I say, and I become conscious that I'm, I'm in a reactionary state. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly working and, and trying to remain conscious and, and, and coming into stillness and, and, and quiet and reflecting on, you know, my, my life and, and looking for ways to allow more of everything into it. Right. <clears throat> um, so I'm, you know, I'm hoping that <laughs> I always joke with my twin brother. I said, dude, every podcast I do is for you. And he was like, thanks. <laughs> but he still won't listen. He still doesn't listen. Um, can one I, of these can days. I make a quick comment on that, please on that, on that image of the tsunami, because there's, there's two things for me that, that, that changed my life drastically. Number one, when I understood that I didn't have to um, 
necessarily face a tsunami like when i as a as a nervous system you know regulation practitioner what i what one of my mentors from uh, from a, an amazing organization called lumos transforms uh her name is uh and kevin Duffel, reminded me that when we when we are to heal um the first thing we need to do is not to dive into the trauma, to dive into the pain. The first thing we need to do is stabilize and resource our nervous system. And the image that she often uses is that, well, if somebody is like drowning, you're walking and you see somebody drowning, are you going to tell them, hey, maybe you should go deeper? Like, no, <laughs> what, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? You're going to get them out of the water. You're going to throw them a lifeline, right? right? And potentially then you, you, know, you can teach them how to swim in shallow waters. And so what I'm trying to say here is that there's ways to make sure that that amount of pain is processed at a pace that feels manageable because we are being told like you know feel it all and connect and be honest this is not what i'm saying i'm saying connect to an amount of pain that based on the resources that you have available right now feels like you can hold it i'm certainly not saying connect to everything because otherwise your nervous system is going to go into a shutdown and it's completely useless people who are learning meditation right now since the beginning of covid you know, that's great. So many people taking on meditation. Bro, if you take meditation without understanding that like meditation is not a, it's not a, it's not a stress management skill. It's like for spiritual enlightenment. And right. that, that path is rocky and meditation is going to connect you to your body. And if you've been holding stress <laughs> like everybody else in your body, that meditation is not going to be resting, restful. And that's good. That's normal. So number right. one, learning the skills and the tools whether it's breathing, whether it's movement, whether like there's so many skills and ways out there, you know. Um, so searching for that, that way to mitigate that tsunami, to say, I'm just going to, just a wave. Yeah. You ride that wave, feel how that feels. And then I go back, right? Number one. Number two, I don't have to face that tsunami alone. Like I used to think, and, and also, also I believe that's kind of a failure of our modern system with the current model of psychotherapy which again, I'm saying that with a lot of respect to the very well-intentioned and knowledgeable people uh, doing this, you know, offering these services. Uh, and I include myself providing one-on-one -on -one services, but I'm, I'm more and more, I'm moving into group work because we're social creatures. Mm -hmm. Because if um, I have another five, 10, 15 people, right? Supporting me, holding me, non-judgmentally, lovingly, patiently and saying, that's okay. That's a different experience right there. You know how different of an experience that is? My God. Just, just talking about it like gives me chill because mm -hmm. when I've discovered what can be done and it's and, and if it's men's work for me, it takes it even to a to a different level yeah. because <clears throat> no, I can feel because that. Because you yeah. know that guy 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 like behave differently. If there's one woman in the circle, oh, that's yeah. it. Right. Like, <laughs> like, oh you know, I know. Like, the brain like fucking monkey wrench, head, right? <laughs> the brain. And, and so when we're able to be in that space that becomes sacred and when I have, you know, I just had a retreat like a month ago with like 20 men in France in the mountains. And when you find yourself in the middle of the circle, when we do shadow work and we give opportunity for the men to do exactly what I've been talking about, right. for the, what we've been talking about for the past hour, which is like, come on, brother, feel what you need to feel. Yeah. There's no need to hide. There's no need to run. Just be what you, know, be what you need to be right now. And when that brother gets angry, you have another 20 men who say like, come on, get yeah. it, like, like feel it, you know, and we're going we're gonna to diffuse that anger. You need, you're sad, you're going to have 20 men, we're going to give you a hug, you know. And again, that's, that's so powerful. Like, that's, that's like, for me, it has chills because I saw men, I saw the shift in their, in their attitude, in their mindset, in their nervous system, that moment when they're like, I'm not alone. Right. I'm not alone. And I got, I got, goose, I I got goosebumps, you know, life. just, you know, imagining that experience. It, it changed my life. And I, and so for when I see 20 guys were hugging and how sad that it became controversial in 2021 to think about 20 men Hug, were hugging. Yeah. You hug, did you well, hugging you? became controversial. Hugging became controversial. Hugging. And, and I'm not talking about the sexual part, the sexual no, yeah. part. I'm talking about the, the having 20 men. And, and for me, it was reassuring actually to have to see 20 men who don't know each other. We're like, I'm here for you and I'm going to take you and hug you. And I'm going to have another one who comes and another right. one who comes. And then you become like it's a giant hug and everybody starts to hum. Everybody starts to hum, start to hum. Yeah. And we go like, oh, 
and that nervous system yeah so and talk about a rewiring brother doesn't need to run anymore doesn't have to hide anymore because he's felt what he's felt and there may be some more but right. he knows that it's possible but that's a different experience that's a different imprint and that's a different response that his body is going to be able to draw from in every situation moving forward because that's what we end up doing whether we're conscious of it or not you know, we, we, our bodies remember things, whether you're talking about exposure to the flu, or you're talking about a traumatic experience, an anger experience, you know, the, the, the body has all these responses that it, it's, it's practiced, it's had, a, yeah. it's had its lifetime to, you know, rehearse. And, and that's why sometimes, you know, our, our ouches don't respond very well to our pinches, right? Because we, you know, the pinch was so small, and the ouch was like, ah, you know it was like wait a minute and where, where did that come from that can't be from what just happened right i mean and I'm, what i'm talking about is not just the physical but also the emotional the emotional ouch the, the right down the line and and the amazing thing about those experiences and i you know i've had i've had some of them in in, a, in some incredible retreats um that i've been on and, and they rewire the, the nervous system to, and then you go out into your life and and you bring that with you things are things are a little yeah. different you know there's progress made and so the the response that you have in your relationships whether it be work whether it be with a spouse is a healthier one it's a healthier one for everyone and what's more important than that yeah and what and, and what you're doing in that moment you're reclaiming safety i i i, I see my i see my work and both my practice for myself and the work I do with people is helping people to feel safe again within themselves and with, with the support and the love of, of, of others, right? Because once I'm able to identify these islands of safety throughout my day, then that means there's hope. Maybe in between that time and that time, I'm dealing with an abusive boss and maybe I can't tell him off right now because I need the income and that's okay. I'm not saying, you know, just like flip him off and punch him and, and leave. I'm saying learn how to not get stuck in that state because throughout your day there will be moments it's important for me it's important for all of us to create these moments where i'm like i'm me i'm feeling i'm diffusing whatever activation so that maybe on at the end of the day or at the end of the week there's just a little less you yeah. know for me to pro to have to process right and and i want to thank you for for speaking to the metaphor that i use with a tsunami because I should have finished it the way I was thinking about it, and and which was, the, of course, it's not, it, it's it's not a tsunami that you're that you're hit with, and there is a very healthy way to, to to get the support that you need, and it's not by, you know, it just feels like that. That's my my point yeah. in using that metaphor was that's what it feels like, oh, yeah. but but at the same time, that's not what it ends up being, you know, and you should never be in a situation where you're you know, you're, you're, you're just affirming and revisiting the worst of your traumas. There's nothing healthy about that. I, I mean, as far as I know, as, as far as therapies go, I mean, sometimes people need to unearth what's there in order to address and heal it, but that's different. That's not what we're, you know, that, that's not necessarily what I was re referring to, but, but thank you for, for taking a moment and, and addressing that um and and also i want to say you know i have i have my, my best friend um my best my, he was my best man at my wedding you know he's he's he, he's an emotional guy but he's but he's, he's he's also a tough guy and he and he still has this idea that somehow you know when he's emotional it's a mistake you know or uh, you know he he'll get emotional um you know I'll, I'll show him like a video that i made um and, and he'll get emotional watching it and then he'll like he'll apologize and and, and i'm like i'm gonna say you're sorry there's nothing wrong with yeah. there's nothing wrong with you you know what i mean like it's not you're not like off balance you're not you don't have a a, a fucking chemical imbalance because you got emotional watching something because you got emotional hearing something bro that's just that that means that you you know you you're alive <laughs> that's all it means and man it's a it, 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 it's always hard for me to see him because he, he feels so shamed when he gets vulnerable, you know? 
Um, and, and I, and I always, I'm like, dude, there's nothing wrong with, you don't have to apologize. You know what I mean? Like nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing that, that you can feel that. And, and it's okay to express it, especially around me, you know, but yeah, that, that's, that's a beautiful thing. What, you know, what, what I can't help myself, but think right now is, 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 you know, when, uh, is for me to be able to cry once I, I remember, I don't know, a few, few months ago, maybe a year or two ago. Uh, I, I was I was in that program on emotional regulation um, with my with my son. Was at that you know by he was 11, 11 12. Um, and I remember at some point we got we got emotional. We just happened to like we ended up in the same breakout groups and and so we we opened up. And I told him how how proud of him I was to be able to share some stuff with his dad sitting next to him, which. To me, it was like, oh, you know, I'm still, I'm still working on it, and and I remember we both started to, you know, I started to cry, and he started to cry, and and so in that moment, I was both proud of him and proud of myself for saying, hey, these are tears of joy and pride, and and both also some 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 maybe some like almost resolved and healing because I see that you have the strength. To feel and to say things in front of your father that I, I didn't, you know, this is not how I grew up. And so, yeah. and so in that moment, he saw me cry. And I remember like before that, they were like, hey, babe, we've never seen you cry. And I was like, well, you know, I cry. I, I cry. Yeah. Like, I've never <laughs> seen you cry. And I was like, oh, shit, they're going to think that, you know, men should yeah. cry. And so in the, on that day, I was like, ah, oh, good. You know, I was, I was emotional. They saw that. And I'm glad they saw that. Because, yeah. because in that moment, I know that they learned that, hey, it's okay. Men That's can right. feel stuff. Let's not, get stu let's not get stuck in it, right? Let's not get right. stuck in whatever, wherever I'm experiencing. I don't want to get stuck in there. Or I don't want to hold on to it and be too greedy. You know, like, yeah. you know, me, I just, just don't want to be happy all the time. And I'm like, oh, where, like, what planet do you live on? Like, this is not how it works. Right. But, but anyway. And, and that's the... That, that's the the, the, the uh, oscillate that's the that you you have to be mm -hmm. fluid with it you know and and kid you know I, I think we 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 get it from our parents and every person is different and and some some people have a stronger proclivity to <clears throat> to hold on to it you know what I mean I used to be like this uh I, I used to really hold <laughs> you know you hold you want to hold on to it you want to hold on to your anger you want to hold on to your feeling you know um, I don't know why we do that. I don't know what the human, what the the mechanism is, but but it seems to be a very common thing, you know. And I and I catch my my sons doing it, and I and you know, and I'll catch myself doing it sometimes. But I'm but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good with it these days. I try. I don't hold on to too much. And if I do, I'm like, all right, what do I got to do? What do I if I if I find myself you know holding on to it involuntarily. I'm like, okay, what can I do? You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put some music on. Maybe I'll go for a run. You know, there's a lot of things I can do to move this, this feeling, this energy um, yeah. and allow myself to feel it, you know, and sometimes I'll, I'll be, I'll be exercising or running or I love boxing. And, you know, I get very emotional when, when sometimes, especially because I love music and I, and I use music to, to, for whatever I'm doing, you know, but I'm like, I just let it all hang out, you know, Sometimes I'm that guy you see running who's got tears in his eyes. Like <laughs> yeah. it's New York City, so nobody, you know, no one notices me anyway. I doesn't. I could be running in my underwear crying, no one would notice. But um, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's all, it's whatever you got to do, you know, to to come back into the present moment. Um, you should do it. You should find those things to do it, you know. And what you'll do is you'll end up finding a lot of joy as well. That's what I know. But. Uh, uh, and again, I think it's it, you know to uh, to part partially answer your question around like I don't know why we do this. I know for me it was upbringing, it was culture, yeah. it was like you know this is it, it, it was it, I didn't feel safe to feel certain things so much so that you know for years me arguing was just not was just I was remaining silent and, and mm. I remember the first time I was arguing with my wife was uh, was together with my kids, my greatest teacher, and uh, 17 years, you know, it, it married in a relationship that you, you learn a few things along the road. <laughs> and I remember one day I, I, 
like my definition of this episode was like I cannot last it and for the first time in 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 many many years I was like you know this is bullshit and and she and we both stopped she looked at me she was like <laughs> and she started to to applaud and to clap at me which obviously in the moment didn't you know or, no I'm sure that was not yeah you know, I'm not sure if it helped or not but in that moment I think we both started to almost laugh because because she was like ah oh, finally yeah like you holding on to that anger doesn't mean that i don't get angry it right. means instead of getting out in that moment and me being honest with her and me it's just going to seep through every single or every other interaction in the next few days exactly right so yeah. i'm pretending that i'm, I'm like no i'm not going to get angry because you know that's not i don't want the kids to do that like that bullshit it's because i was afraid of it and the moment that i had the support you know, to, to and the permission to feel and to realize that it was so much healthier for me to yell, this is bullshit. And then to say, you know, sorry, and to repair and to tell my kids, by the way, what just happened here, that's normal. We love yeah. each other and, uh, and we're stronger because of this, right? Rather yeah. than trying to avoid. Oh, it's shit. a huge thing. It's a huge shift in, in the dynamics of, of a relationship when, and I, and I see this with many men close to me, you know, you get them away from their spouses and, and God forbid something comes up where they get a chance to, to, to let out some of that passive aggression that has built up. And, and it's a tidal wave. And I'm like, Jesus, dude, I'm like, you got to talk to someone. I mean, you are sitting on a, you're sitting on a fucking dynamite stick, man. It's not healthy. It's not. I mean, like the fact that this, the mere mention and reminder of this person who is supposed to be your, <clears throat> your loved one brings up this much anger and hostility in you is a very unhealthy problem in your life right now. You know, like that you need to, you can't be sitting on this amount of, I mean, like I'm constantly shocked. Like, I mean, and in some cases I'm talking about guys who are divorced. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're not even, yeah. You're not even with her anymore. And you still can't talk about her without f raging, you know, like, and blaming everything on her, you know, <laughs> but time, time, time doesn't heal. No, it's like I've, 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 yeah, I've been doing this work for a long time. Time doesn't heal. I've worked with people who were on their deathbeds, who were dragging stuff for like five, six decades <laughs> right? of, of like emotional burden that's mm -hmm. been festering has been poisoning their life time doesn't heal what i tell my patients and clients always is like time and healing practices heal right like instead of just keep on repeating everything's gonna be okay i'm great i'm good staying positive mm -mm. forget that bullshit. sit find a safe space where you can start to connect to some of some of that pain we're going back to that holding that pain right because that's that's really that's really the, the most uh, important thing, and there's something else I wanted to mention, but I forgot right now. It's okay. Yeah. So, so I wanted to ask you. You know, I, I, some of the techniques that you use, and I was trying to, you know, I was reading about your the som somatic stress release, and I was and I was like, I was trying to kind of, I have an idea of what it means, but I, but I was like reading about like. Um, the approach that you use and how you use like uh, therapeutic tremors to, mm -hmm. to release chronic stress. And that al it almost reminds me, like I, I, I used to work with a core therapist um, and we used a lot of movement. And sometimes we would do these movements where, you know, it would cause a, a tremor in the body and she would be like, that's good. That's releasing stress. And I'm like, really, you sure it's not just me, uh, like my muscles fatiguing from this crazy thing you're making me do but like can you explain a little bit about about that technique so so yes i can i i can talk about the technique before i talk about the technique let's be careful and understand that it's not about the it's not about the technique mm -hmm. like when if 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 you're talking about um for example therapeutic tremors or or like tremors that will that will come that will be experienced um, at times spontaneously even though that's also something that you can learn how to induce which are by the way very different from like muscle fatigue right right 
the stool. It's like if, <laughs> yeah. it's, if you're holding some crazy plank, of course you're going to shake. Right. But the way we would want to experience these tremors, right, in a in a very very small amount, because again, the, you're you're inducing it. Um, is, is in a way that's completely relaxed and safe and effortless, right? This is what we, we're aiming for. Like healing shouldn't, it's not easy, but I've, I've learned really that the, the more we relax, the more we let go, you know, the, the more we get out of the way, like we need to get out of the way and let the body do the work. So these tremors oftentimes, and it could be tremors, but it can be other physical manifestations happen oftentimes when our body feels safe enough when our nervous system feels safe enough to come out of what we call a state of freeze a yeah. state of freeze is basically like we're shutting down we're collapsing it's just too much i feel overwhelmed i feel trapped i feel stuck you know like i have difficulties concentrating i'm forgetting stuff like my my body you know i may i can't hold food um i feel like i may feel pale dizzy nauseous clumsy and so on and so forth right like that that sense of like i feel overwhelmed which i think a lot of people are feeling when yeah. after like being like experiencing fear for a year and a half most of the people i'm talking to and it's just the people reaching out right? most of the right. people i'm talking to it's just the people who got your number My, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> imagine but, you know but so so to anybody like listening and being like, huh, what's that state of freeze? Like understand that that state of freeze is a defense mechanism, right? It's, there's nothing wrong with you. But yeah, when you don't have energy, when you don't feel like doing anything, when you don't feel like getting out of bed, when you don't feel like cuddling, playing with your kids, doing all that thing, it's not because you're a bad person. It's because your nervous system is in a state of overwhelm. When we start to do healing practices, therapeutic tremors, breath work, hypnotherapy, it's just so many ways to, to heal. Again, pick one. If you, if you kind of wonder which one, look into buying The Body Keeps the Score, right? Which is a great book where it talks about a lot of modalities. And then maybe you can find one that resonates with you. Nice. And then you yeah. find a modality, a way to, like I mentioned earlier, to reclaim safety. And when you start to come out of that state of freeze, when you start to reclaim safety, when you start to, re to, to reduce the intensity of that, that stress response, what's going to happen? You're going to reconnect to your body. That stress response, when you get overwhelmed, we get, we get checked out. That yeah. makes sense. It might be very appropriate and adaptive at times, but most of the time, for me and for the most people, it's not saving your life. You know? right. I mean, it's just like maladaptive. And so when I start to come out of that state of overwhelm, What's going to happen? I'm going to feel again. And that's what I was referring to when to people doing meditation and, and therapeutic tremors or whatever you're doing. Like, remember that on that path to healing, like before you get to that place where you're like, ah, I'm peaceful. There's a place where it's like, whoo, it's tumultuous there. Right? Yeah. So again, needing to stabilize resource, understand. I have people, uh, a, a client of my mentor came out of jail. Um, and while he was watching TV, he was, he was shaking like this. And he was like, oh man, shit, like what's wrong with me, right? And, and interestingly, I've had the same conversation about a week ago with, with a, a patient of mine who was maybe, let's say about a year, a year and a half into her recovery. She's, she's been done with treatment, right, for a year. And she's like, I should come back to be back to normal right now, but I'm, I'm dealing with shit including some 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 jitters and stuff and i'm like mm -hmm. you know what mm. it is it's your body feeling safe enough to say i don't have to hold all of this mm. now i can bring these start to slowly bring these walls down mm. right start to slowly come out and be like all right is it do i need do i need that guard you were talking about boxing i've been boxing for like years and like is it is it okay for me to kind of like bring that guard down or do i have to keep it up because yeah. if I don't feel safe, of course I'm going to keep it up. You can't jerk your nervous system back into back into safety. Right? Oh. It has to be gentle. It has to be organic. That's so, right. So back in, in summary here, as you come out of freeze, you come into, you reconnect to your body, you're going to feel stuff. Learn how to pace yourself, whether you're doing therapeutic tremors and learning how to shake and to reconnect to your body. Um, even though I teach people how to induce it, 
and have, have, have classes and stuff, I would say the most important thing is people to pace themselves in that healing. Because I see people going into different modalities um, that can be very effective, but if they go into it thinking that it has to be a cathartic, you know, like yeah. exor exorcism-like session where everything's going to click and I'm going to heal, I'm like, come on, have some respect. Have yeah. some respect for the pain that you've been dragging. Have some respect for your trauma. Have some respect for that little one that 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago was scared shitless as yeah. whatever happened, happened, right? And so, so learning how to pace that healing, that reconnection to the body is the most important thing. And for a lot of people, it's like, I'm going to come out of, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stay there for a few seconds and then <laughs> I'm going back. That's cool. That's right. That's great. That's now you get a glimpse that hey, while I was, while I was what I did, yeah. was nothing. I was okay actually. Maybe I can go back to it. Maybe I can re-experience it. Extend that amount of time until eventually that becomes that becomes my baseline. That's right. And like place where instead of going like this every now and then, I'll go like this and then go back to baseline, which is yeah, I, I can connect. I'm present. I'm aware. I'm relaxed, and so on and so forth. And, and interestingly enough, <clears throat> what I've discovered and experienced is when you begin to live like this, instead of like this, you can see a lot more about everything that's happening around you. And, and sometimes that's a blessing and sometimes that's a curse, but there's an opportunity there to experience more truth, more more perspective you know more joy sometimes more oh my god <laughs> more fuck are you kidding me but th that's all part of the experience you know and 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 but but i i i still believe that it's it's so worth it you know to to rehabituate and recondition the nervous system in, in a way that you aren't a constant brace against your feelings against your reactions um that that you can be fluent you know and oscillate with them it it's just you know it's it's the difference between when you when you first learn to drive a car and you know your focus is very intent you know you have to yeah. you know you can't just check the rearview mirror you got to like open the windows make sure everyone in the back seat is ducked down to see. you want to be able to see you don't you know you don't trust yourself you really got to hone in on everything you're doing but then once you learn to drive a car you're like you know, you can use the mirror. You don't have to think much about it. Your your mind is doing other things and seeing other things. And it's the same thing when I think when you begin to heal and integrate, you just, you know, you you you're, you free up a lot of bandwidth and, and and space to to see and consider other things. <clears throat> that's all that's all I'm saying is part of the wonderful incentive of doing some of this work for anyone listening. Um, for sure. And and and, and a good first step, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, is also to, to educate yourself about the nervous system, to understand how it works, to understand how your stress response works. And, and for me, like when, when I started to understand, when I explained to people that, hey, by the way, the fact that you, know, you, you feel down, you feel depressed, you feel, or, or the fact that in that moment, you, know, you, you didn't speak up or you couldn't defend yourself and this and that was was actually your nervous system trying to keep you safe. And so what I'm trying to say here is that, again, coming back very briefly to that, my, my beef with that positive thinking, for people to acknowledge that that shutdown, that state of activation, these are all attempts of our nervous system to keep us safe. And I know for me that, that, that allow me to bring so much compassion for myself, right? So much compassion and understanding for, for you know, for, for my parents, for my, for my loved ones, for some people who've hurt me in the past, um, and to understand that, oh, okay, I, I, I see that you were in that state. They were stuck. They were stuck. And, and, I, and for me to say, oh, I was, I was frozen, and that was my body trying to keep me safe, let me learn another way to be safe. Let me try to send signal. You were talking about repatterning, you know, reprogramming. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't, we don't, Again, this is, this is not exorcism. Like it's no. not about like ah, I'm gonna get it out. 
get wet out right. integrate integrate that 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 anger is a messenger that anger everything everything transforms so i don't want to release per se my anger i want to let my anger run its course in a in a safe space in a safe way so that it gets transformed and i come out of that experience with wisdom right, right? and with 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 insights that That's allows right. me then to change you know like for me i have I have classes i have courses on post traumatic growth mm. how fascinating that is like to to see that as a society we've become expert at, at labels and issues and diseases and blah blah and we forget that like you said very early on pain is a messenger yeah. this is just an opportunity for change and, I, and and i'm saying that with respect you know to all the people who are suffering and we're like you know shut the fuck up we're like cliche stuff right but, that, but that's that's true like the moment that you understand that you you there's an opportunity for growth it's an opportunity for, for change people right. who are experiencing post-traumatic growth you will see there will be changes in themselves changes in in the way they relate with others like how many people told me like in you know hiv is the best thing that ever happened to me cancer is the best thing that ever happened to me and at the mm -hmm. beginning i was like what the fuck are they talking about yeah. <laughs> like i was so i was confused i was like i don't get it this is not what i'm supposed to hear from them right now and and this is not and oftentimes i have people who are like you know I'm, if i had a choice i wouldn't do it again but it happened it happened and it changed my life and and for people who are willing and and we have the support to to engage in that opportunity to change it's fascinating right like more gratitude more openness to to possibilities spiritual changes like there's yeah. just so many it's like an awakening in waiting it, it is it's a it's a and oftentimes it's it it takes a you know a cataclysmic event unfortunately for people to come to the realization that these are the most in my opinion, these are the most important things in life. And, and you know, I, I'm a student of Dr. Joe Dispenza's. I, I often, oh, yeah. you know, reference him and, and because I've learned so much from him. So, you know, one of the things he always says and teaches so well is like, you know, why would you wait to change? Why, you know, why wait for the, for the tragedy? Why not change in joy? You can change. You can, you can change when the shit hits the fan or you can change in joy, you know? I, he always says, you know, change and ch do it now. And, and then whatever happens, whatever, whatever comes your way, you're going to be like, I got this. And he's, and he's, you know, he's wonderful. He's a wonderful teacher. And I, he, he taught me how to meditate. And, um, you know, I, I changed my life when I began reading his work and, and this, the, this, the neuroscience and the, the studies that he's been doing. And he's got some crazy stuff coming out. I can't wait for the world to see what he's been up to because he's, you know, he's, I mean, he's, he was a, um, a chiropractor. He's obsessed with science and neuroscience and, and quantum physics. And, but, but he's been doing, you know, he always has to have the scientists present to record what's happening. <laughs> That's what I love about him because, you know, science, he always says that science is the new mysticism. I mean, unfortunately science has taken a, 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 a you know, it's, it's taken a, a, I don't want to say wrong turn, but it's but it's 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 definitely off the path, I think, uh, thanks to 2020. But I but I think that the, you know, it, it's going to end up working to everyone's advantage. The fact because science, spirituality, and mysticism are all converging, and they'll continue to converge as we understand and can see more things that are not visible, you know, um, with the naked eye. So, so I, I, I think I have faith that, you know, science is, you know, is sure we were, we've been off-roading a bit in, two, <laughs> in 2020 with science, but uh, I, 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 I have faith that the, the truths that are going to come out and be scientifically um, incontrovertible in the years to come are going to change the, change the world. I, I, I have total faith in that because um, I know it's coming, you know. I, I see it coming, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Science. And, and, in, and in my and in my mind, there will probably be but a return, like to, yeah. to to what we used to practice. I, you know, I, I, I think we've been 
like dive, like the state of of science and, and, and medical you know field has been uh, you know has been off road for like on the wrong track i think oh, yeah. for, for a few decades uh from the moment we started to say well you have all these ways to heal to like well this is it that this is yeah. half and and it has to be allopathic you know just to like go back um but 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 to also just if i may to to chunk it down when you say like you know don't don't wait for the don't wait for the catastrophe mm. to um you know to to do something for me i'm i'm it, it's also referring it's the big picture version of of what i was saying earlier which is like why why do you wait for like the weekend or the evening for you to do a very simple practice that will actually diffuse that nervous system like mm -hmm. You know how amazing that is, like the number of people were coming to me to just to ask me to remind them to breathe and sometimes okay. to teach them yeah. to breathe. And sometimes I'm telling them, you don't have to, of course, they, there's like hundreds and thousands of ways to breathe and I can teach you some fancy techniques. Right. But in the words of another you know, friend of mine, it's like, I think the goal is to reclaim that relationship with the breath, reclaim that relationship with the body. and. And if throughout your day, I remember a client of mine, it was like his throat was shutting down. It was like, it was like the body was saying, I don't, I don't like what's going on, shutting everything's down. And he's into that. He's the way we worked is that he was invited, like after, like he had something in his schedule that made it like every 20 minutes, there was a shift. Every 20 minutes, he would take a breath, one breath one breath i've been doing this work for a long time the longer i work the more experienced i am the more simple my my practice has become like mm. all the long hypnotherapy convoluted practices that i and sessions that i used to have are gone because yeah. i feel like come back to your breath remind yourself put it put we have this we have this like every yeah. moment in front of our face just put a freaking reminder like every 20 minutes 20 minutes stop what you're doing take a big old i mean that that man Ooh, i can just that seems so basic and yet so life-saving yeah you know, for me I, for me i'm i mean I've, my my spiritual practices you know invite me five times a day to come to stop to cleanse myself yeah. to wash myself to do some movements to do some breath and at the beginning i was like oh, this is so continuous five times a day <laughs> <laughs> this is and and today i'm like oh, thank god yeah. i'm so like literally i'm so grateful for these healing practices yeah. i believe that all spiritual practices are healing practices in essence yeah and so that makes me laugh when when people even people in my family are like wow they really got you they got you to pray five times a, a day i'm like got me what do you mean got me i yeah i'm the one who's benefiting from <laughs> I, I decompress my back I, yeah. I i i regulate my breath my cardiovascular system you know i'm going to stretch a whole bunch of muscles that were tight amazing. as i was sitting in front of that computer for hours you know like yeah so all this to say inviting people to discover a path to look for look for ways there's so many ways so many and look what you look what you did you you took what what, what i'm forgive me i i forgot what they call that they call that um that the five five times five a day prayers. that what's it called prayers? yeah uh, but five five daily prayers like, right the, the five daily prayers of of, of islam that's, right that's and and so just if, if that's, that's right Salah. that's right that's the word i was looking for um and and so you you were like man this is a pain in the butt you know five times a day i don't know <laughs> but what but what you did was you know you recontextualized something that's been part of that practice that you know um and you realize what an opportunity it was and so you went from being like Fuck, i don't feel like doing this to to being like oh you know what i can you know what i can get out of this every time i do it this is great you know what i mean like but that but the way that you were able to recontextualize something that's you know a, a tenant of that practice and that um religion is it that's that's it speaks volumes to how you can take something that's already part of your life and and look at it as an opportunity instead of a, a drag you know it's yeah. it's it's it's, yeah, a, it's so, so. Ama amazing to hear how you did that that's awesome i i i it, 
it's just the it's it's i think one big day that was important for me is also when when a a, a friend of mine was also a practitioner uh gave a uh, gave a, a lecture in her mosque and she and she referred to the prayers as re resiliency pauses and i was like duh <laughs> like of course like and she was so right but the bigger picture here of of, of what we're talking about for me uh, since we're having like a, a pretty honest conversation here is like i feel we've 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 disconnected ourselves from from the divine with both within ourselves and outside in the world like of course if i feel like like i see people in my really close circles who who whose purpose is to i don't know produce make money <laughs> And they're gonna die soon, and nothing's gonna happen, and and that's okay. I like I, I think and, and anybody's welcome to believe what they want to believe, but but how freaking depressing that is to think My that God. this is the sole purpose. And and I see for me to have the opportunity to reconnect to the divine. I see a shift right now, even these past few years in my work of people who were kind of tired of this, like this is clinical, this right, way. and were telling me, I wanna, can we do a prayer? You know the the power I've started, like I've given myself permission in the past couple of years, every now and then when somebody's going through like a tough time and I know the the people in the group kind of like, you know, share some some common views that I'm like, hey, can we take like 10 seconds to pray for whatever, you know, like, you know, Brad's mother, just this, can we do this? And and Dr. Joe Disponza will tell you, you know, the power of prayers, you know, we, oh have, my this, God, yeah. we, ha we have this research and, and showed so it pains me to have to tell people, by the way, this is scientifically proven. You know, the, the dogma of science is telling you that, yes, you should be praying. Yeah. And because when we reconnect to our own divinity, like not only it's like, it's like you, you get in touch with, with, with all this amazing inner power that you have and with the beauty around you. Like, so, so that's what I'm hoping for people. And I see people reconnecting to something greater to a greater purpose and i'm glad to see that because once they do that it's just so much more pressure i live in a country where we often finish our sentences saying inshallah god willing mm -hmm. that means well i'm going to do whatever i can but hey you know right. maybe that's not going to happen right and it's like and to me also living in a country where the other most common thing that we say is alhamdulillah which is thank god which is for me a, a practice of of gratitude which i started before i became a muslim because i was like this is awesome right like every time hey how are you today i'm good alhamdulillah how was the food alhamdulillah you know did you, <laughs> are you, are you is your back still hurting well alhamdulillah as in well it could be worse right right so it's a constant reminder of like it's some practices which are by the way like that practice of gratitude like you know is across all all religions right they're all saying the same thing roughly, right right and to say hey by the way like these are the practices if you do these practices if you get into a routine right mm -hmm. then they have opportunities to actually promote your health find balance find alignment you don't have to freaking reinvent the wheel no like, this is all in like as far as i see it most of it is in the holy books everything is the holy books yeah seek, seek sacred traditions humble <clears throat> yourself a little bit you know, and give it a shot. And it's, yeah. it might, might be a bumpy ride, but hey, I, I trust in, in sacred wisdom and knowledge. So yeah. all roads lead back to Rome. <laughs> oh, it's incredible that you said that, you know, and what people don't, that, what I think that sometimes is lost in, in, in this is that, you know, when you and Dr. Judd really teaches this well and gives you an opportunity to experience this well if you if you practice um and which i have over and over and over and over again you know the the more and sometimes gratitude needs an object right and and so play, i mean some people are so um kind of hardened by so many things that, 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 that they have trouble opening their heart. You know, one of the things that got me into this work, which is, a lo which is a long story that I won't go into, but, you know, as an actor, I was having trouble feeling vulnerable and all I wanted to do was feel, I wanted to play these roles and I couldn't play them. I had, I, I didn't know it at the time. I mean, I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know where it came from. I, I was kind of clueless. Um, 
but I had all this conditioning about, about feeling vulnerable and I had a real problem. I wanted to be, a, I wanted to be this, this dynamic, explosive, emotional actor. And I, and every time I got vulnerable with, I didn't have to think, I didn't have to do anything. I was like Iron Man, you know, the armor just was like, you know, like without a thought it was gone. It would, I would feel it and it would be gone. And what a problem, you know, but that's what sent me soul searching um, so many years ago. Uh, that's what put me on a healing path was, was, you know, my, I realized that something was wrong because I couldn't feel the way I wanted to in my work. Well, of course, the implications were profound and the discoveries were, it would take me years to get to the, to the bottom of all that and begin to heal. But, uh, oh man, where was I going before I went down memory lane? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I know, you know, gratitude, I, I believe is just as Dr. Joe always says, is that they, it's kind of the ultimate state of receivership because you're putting yourself in this, you're, you know, in this, you're, you're signaling to the universe that you're, that you're so grateful for what you have that you can have more of it. You know what I mean? That, that's the feeling. That's the signal. And so you end up, cre you know, creating the, the response and, and, and the signal at the same time that, you know, this thing that is your life that you're so grateful for, you know, and the universe is, you know, God, whatever you want to call, whatever you want to call it, the divine is, is always giving us what we're truly feeling and, and, and asking for, right? It's like some, so many times that people just need to get out of the way and that thing that they've been looking for will show up, right? It's always, we're always creating. The divine is always bringing us, you know, what, what, we're, what we, we imagine, sometimes not exactly what, the way we imagine, but it's, it's always on the way, right? And I just think that that's another wonderful uh, side effect, if you will, of, of, of practicing, having a gratitude practice, you know, it's, you really put yourself in a position to let the universe surprise you with more of that thing that you love already. And I love that. Yeah. I mean, what's there, there, there's God so quickly, you know? Yeah. And, and again, I, I think it, it can be in any way, shape and form, like yeah. whatever resonates with somebody, but, but just getting into that practice because I get I get frustrated when again like when I see people who are, and I'm talking about you know right I'm, I'm thinking about my father who's like you know I'm not gonna do any practice but just wait trying peel after peel after peel <laughs> after peel yeah and I'm like the health is not out there the health is right here and 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 I have to let go because you know this is you are you and I am me yeah uh, but but when when we when we give ourselves permission to engage in these in these practices, in this routine, to strengthen these neural pathways, to heighten to heighten that vibration, mm -hmm. like, and 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 it, at times it also frustrates me that that people are like vibration bullshit, <laughs> like um, come and talk to my astrophysicist friend because I... when we have this conversation, you know everything is energy, everything is vibration, so. Maybe you don't understand it. Maybe that, <laughs> I just that, had that's, this. That's your problem. Yeah, but that's not mine. So don't don't poo poo the whole vibration thing because you know because you, you don't get it. Right. About entanglement. <clears throat> you want to talk about like distant healing. You want to talk about a whole bunch of things that right now, you know, physics is right. So again, back to science, saying finally, ah, oh, yeah, these are that's actually right. powerful practices. Well, yeah. Like, so for me, I'm like, let's, let's go, let's go back and, and give ourselves permission to kind of shed. I was, I was having a conversation a few days ago with uh, in one, one of the men's circle and they were talking about like per person, this and that. And, and I was sharing with them that for me, for many years, my, my teachers were telling me, you know, just that we, it's these filters, we need to remove these filters. And I was like, yeah. I don't understand what filters you're talking about. And one interpretation for me right now, the understanding that's coming is that I'm actually just invited like to, re to, to simplify who I am, to come back to the core of who I am by simply letting, letting go of some patterns, letting go of some habits that are not serving me, that are not me, right? Whether it's, whether it's, whether it's me yelling at people or whether it's me like shying away from speaking my truth, like the moment I, the moment I let go of that behavior, it's freeing and I become more honest, I become more vulnerable, 
a much better version of myself yeah. for myself and, and for people around me. And, 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 and the last thing I want to say here is that I also become more mature. That's what I wanted to mention earlier. Yeah. I was like, what do I want to mention? For men to grow the fuck up, like, can we please realize that we as men right now, and, and, and it's slowly changing, but it's a bunch of toddlers. Like, a fucking bunch of toddlers is right. With, <laughs> My like, God. So long ago in the White House and so on and so forth, you know, as in like, what are we doing? And, yeah. and, and, and if we, you know, toddlers with the nuclear codes and toddlers like and like egos like fighting each other oh and, and healthy versions of a lot of the men men's work is like or at least the way we approach it is through archetypes and so it's it's fascinating to see how men a lot of the men are just boys oh and, ab absolutely and I, and or at least and they pretend to be men but when the shit hits the fan that reaction is not a, a grown no. up man's reaction. It's a no. it's a six year old, it's an eight year old, it's a fifteen year old. No, you did it. Like I, I mean, <clears throat> right across the board, you know, there's no we live in a society where we we elect leaders based on their ability to blame someone else for the problems that have been around forever. I mean, and and whoever does it with the most cunning and, and convincing nature. We we're like, okay, we'll we'll pick them because that's all we're gonna get. I mean, we 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 have we're not we don't have a system in place where anyone takes responsibility for anything else, you know. And and that's that's you see it in our society. You see it ha it's reflected in all facets of our society. Right now, we have we have a population that is refusing to take their own health into their responsibility. It's refusing to be an adult in many ways, you know, and, and so everything is, it must be delivered, you know, just like a toddler, just like a baby, you know, it's like, oh, don't, don't worry about anything. Just take this and you'll be fine. Or just do this and you'll be fine. It doesn't work like that. There's, there's no, there, there, nothing works like that. That is like a childish imaginative thinking that, that, that health comes in a pill or a shot. It doesn't, it, and it never will. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think that. I mean, unless you're you're dying, and you know you 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 hurt, you're in an anaphylactic shock, and then maybe you can save them with a shot. <laughs> That's different, though. Um, yeah, but man. These, it's such... these 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 childlike parts, these childlike responses, these immature responses will keep on coming up until us as men we we call we we call each other on our shit this is what i was yeah. talking about right it's like if no, we, it's true like i want people to be able to help like we often say in men's circle like iron sharpens iron it's like right. i want like i want to be able to sit with men who have walked that journey i cannot teach something that have an experience and right. that's true for everything including you know, like the journey of, 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 of being a father, including the journey of being a husband, including the journey of, of being a companion, that's like right. regardless, you know? And, and so that's what, I'm, that's what I'm hoping for, compassion and accountability. Mm. Like if we can be more compassionate with myself, with ourselves, with each other, and at the same time, instead of going along and saying, I'm just gonna let him do his thing, no, don't yeah. let him do his thing, call him on his shit because he needs to grow up. Right. right. And and that shouldn't be, you know, for, for me personally, I don't I don't want my wife to have to do this. Right. I don't want my kids to have to do this. I want other grown up men to be able to tell me, you know, here, like check yourself because right. that response is not, you know, doesn't doesn't seem like he. Right. Yeah. And thank you. And thank you for the mirror. Thank you for the opportunity for me to just <clears throat> go back. Listen yeah. to that childlike part. What is it that I haven't processed? Okay, let me sit with it, hold the pain, process, complete that nervous cycle, uh, nervous system cycle. Right. right? Complete it, whoo, diffuse it, and then it doesn't. It doesn't have any power. I right. know it's there. I know it's been part of me, but I don't have to to respond like this anymore. Right. I've repatterned. I've reprogrammed, and I'm free. That's what right. it is about freedom. That's that's a that's the process and it's a beautiful one you know and the most men in our especially in this in western society and particularly in america we just don't that 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 
kind of support system really has to be sought out and there should be no shame yeah. in that that seeking because i mean what 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 better way to do it to, to find support and, than to find peers who are looking to do the same thing you are and you know it's going to be a bunch of guys who you i mean if you don't if i mean i don't know some guys are like really weird and you know and i guess like it, feeling in front of other guys becomes a, a thing that the inherent thing that they're afraid of sometimes but at the same time when you're with a bunch of guys who who understand the necessity of it um maybe it, it helps you know what i mean i i'm just encouraging people because you know it's not a, a very popular thing to do in america for men right now i know i i see it i see it catching on and i in in other places and overseas but you know um i'm hoping it catches on more here and 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 i'm interested in continuing my my journey in getting into a, a group so um I, 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 this is another time reminder of me that i got to stop putting it off <laughs> yeah, yeah. time or you know things are shifting i you know i do i do feel like this is the end of a world i don't know about yeah. the world but for me that's the end of of a world i feel like somehow the the pain and the suffering and the fear and like all the, all these disruptions for me were just an opportunity to say hey oh i don't know how long it's gonna last so yeah I might as well just do do things that feel in alignment uh, but for me the what i want to go i want to go back to the invitation that you know you you like to all to seek out that support yeah because i've been you know i've been doing martial arts for for uh, for a while and boxing and this and this and that and i remember you know when when i started my mom didn't ask she didn't say well you want to teach yourself martial arts you want to yeah. teach yourself judo no she was like i'm going to tell you i'm going to take you to a master who's going to share with wisdom because he knows stuff that you don't know right and so i feel like for us for me at least it's also important it's like well if i want to learn how to be like a man who is in alignment with who i am who feel what i want to feel who want to be able to both be sad and to be joyful yeah you know i've, I've met i've met guys who are like would tell me like you know i haven't cried in 25 years and i don't think I know. Normal. yeah and i'm like yeah brother i think I, this is not normal and it's <laughs> and, and it's sad because it they're is. like you know i've I've had kids, I've lost dear ones, and, I've, and they've had all of these like major life events and they're like, haven't shed a tear. And right. I'm not saying that you have to cry to feel, I'm just saying here there's a disconnection and there's mm. a loss of opportunity to be human. Like yeah. freeing ourselves. And know it's and okay. Saying, and know it's, know it's, it's okay. That's so it. Seeking, seeking that support. And for me, I went to men and tell them, hey guys, right. I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to feel. I don't know, I have like some daddy issues, mommy issues, this and this, all issues. Can you please show me? Yeah. And boom. Right. And that what that that's that. And then I seek. I continue to seek support. You mm -hmm. know, of people who have been on that journey for longer than I have, who have practiced right. things for longer than I have, and uh, and and that's how it works. Humility, I think, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and then please teach me. Right. It's it's such an opportunity to learn that and embody that it's such an opportunity you know the more the, the 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 further you go in your healing journey the more the more humility i believe that you come into it's i think it's just a natural um wisdom that that you know you start to realize that everyone out there is is is, is you i mean it is going through something like you or has or will and so it's like i mean you know it i i find it much harder even in these times that we're living in to to not empathize with people and you know as frustrated as i get with what's happening to try to return to backspace 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 <laughs> you know and reformulate a thought because you know it it, it, it to, to to hold on to that humility is everything and and the way that you interact with people is the is the first indicator of of you know that humility that's what i notice and you know um so important but i wanted to i wanted to ask you pierre you know this the name of the show is far out with faust so i can't i can't let you go 
I can't, I, before we wrap it up, I got, I got to take you far out with me, man. You know, um, I got to ask you some, some, some questions about your experiences. You, uh, you seem to have delved into mystical realms and, and I'm sure there's been altered states of consciousness and how they got altered. We won't ask, but, but, uh, there's always, of course, there's a lot of ways to alter your consciousness, but, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, have you, have you had, have you ever seen a UFO, you know, and if you have, how did you feel and what did you see? Let's yes, start I there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I did. And in that moment, it was like, what the, and, <laughs> you, it, and, uh, and then there was some kind of fake ass story in the news that they were testing something. Oh, no. Oh. The sky was just like so, like, we were so close. We were in the desert and we had, we had saw some kind of like crazy green missile that took forever to move. And, and so, so yeah. So the first response was, what the fuck? The second response was, uh, oh shit! I think the sausages are burning. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, because we were doing a barbecue. There was no sense of like, mm, we're all gonna die. Right. Um, no, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm in general pretty good at like trying to not waste my time with life anymore. Yeah. I think the past couple of years, I kind of sped up that process of like, like I'm done with the bullshit. Yeah. Um, and 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 now I'm gonna do what what feels right. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's, very I'm cool. Pretty, I'm pretty sure so, beautiful. so it was more like what you know, kind of a wonder, like a like a like what what like what is what is that? Like it was was the was the feeling you had, right? Like what the fuck? What like what you mean, is? You, I mean, but I mean, you asking me where I was telling you about humility, like for me thinking for a second that we're the most advanced form of intelligence <laughs> in this universe. Our our galaxy being a speck, yeah. I it it's either a really depressing thought or <laughs> like a ridiculous one because yeah. because we're not doing a great job. No, we're preserving not preserving the one planet that we have. And for me, it goes without saying that you know, based on different experiences of altered consciousness and yeah. you know, different realms of awareness and and di different energies that you may interact with. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you're speaking and, my you know, language, Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I don't feel like you need to do Aya to to you know ayahuasca or 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 other yeah. other things to necessarily connect to it. No. And 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 for me, that's also the that's kind of the frustrating piece because I have some teachers were like, don't get lazy, just do yeah. the work. You can connect to that, like right. do that. No, and they're like, no shortcuts, right? Right. And I'm like, okay, sure. I you know, and every now and then a shortcut is okay. But, right. But, I, but 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 I want but I talking about getting getting lost in 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 experiences for me as as part of my practices other than other than than, than prayers uh, you know there's also chanting mm -hmm. and when you find yourself chanting we're going back to vibration like mm. you find yourself chanting with another 50 60 70 people yeah. and you go oh and you just let it let it yeah. through you. Oh my friend, like it doesn't take long. Because, and but then you start to accelerate. And I've started to actually like integrate some of that work with the permission of my teacher mm -hmm. in in my work uh, when it's appropriate. You know, for people who are seeking it. And I'm sure. a whole bunch of disclaimers so people don't think like you know. Right, um, right. I'm pushing anything onto people, but I'm sharing with sure. with with. I I know I know people who've who've really taken this to heart and mm -hmm. and men who came to me after certain when i was after i shared some practices that are not mine but they're just like traditional practices and they were like wow i've never felt that connected wow like they were like i've never i've never felt like so buzzy and connected and alive yeah in that moment you know yeah and and that's when i was like well just keep practicing brother right because there's so much more like there's so much more and even things that i don't i can't even fathom because i've only been on that journey for like you know 15 15 years 10 15 years i know i know like teachers who like yeah for like hours like yeah. every day you know like for the past 60 years and these guys are like you know absolutely
Absolutely, man. So before you go, I'm going to ask you my favorite question. Um, if you could whisper into the ears of every person on the planet, if you could make, if you could plant one hypnotic suggestion to them, plant that seed um, that, you know, of course, that you feel would, would, would give them the greatest expression of their life, you know, and, and their interactions with people. What, what would you say? There are two things that come up. Very simple. I would tell them to take a breath. And as they exhale, I would tell them to repeat, I'm not alone and I'm enough. That's, and I would ask them to hold that. I'm not alone, to, I'm not enough. To, right, and not to take it for granted and to notice what that feels like in your nervous system when you say these words. Because when we create space and I see when somebody says these words and I'm like, wait, 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 just hold mm. on, say that again, pause and let them sink, let them sink in. I'm not alone. I'm enough. And that's when you're like, I don't know you, but for me, it's my nervous system that says, ah, oh, thank you. So I'm safe enough. I'm safe enough to feel. I'm safe enough to learn. Safe enough to heal. Safe enough to love. You know, that's what Be I would go for. Beautiful. I love it. I'm going to practice it. Thank you. thank you for the beautiful question. Thank you so much, Pierre. Yes. I, I, I'm so grateful for your time, man. This has exceeded any idea or expectation i could have had it's been awesome thank you so i, I can't wait to tell say thank you to krista for introducing me to you it's, that conversation. it's been an honor Very brother thank you so much i'll be in touch and i'll include all your information in in, in the links and we'll let you know when this is going to come out that sounds good thank you brother have a good one you take too. care thank you